All right, welcome everyone to the 2020 Ebonite Fall Classic here from Waterloo, Iowa at Cadillac XBC. I'm Mike Flanagan from Inside Bowling, and we'd like to thank you for watching the championship match between our tournament leader, Matt McNeil, who was 424 over against Nate Stubler, who was 397 over. And these two guys ran away from the entire field uh, this entire weekend, and they're both going to be throwing urethane. And Matt McNeil gets us started here on the left lane. And looks like he's uh, he's through the face for a 4-7-8, which is uh, unorthodox and something that I did not expect from McNeil. He used a pitch black the entire tournament, and it looks like he's using a little bit of a different urethane ball here. It looks like a new one here from Storm. Uh, we're glad you're watching here with us. Uh, this is the number one and number two seeds. Nate Stubler, we'll get a look at him here in just a moment. But we do want to, before we get too far along in the match, we want to thank our great sponsors for making this possible. If it wasn't for them, we wouldn't have the stream and a great prize fund for these bowlers to bowl for. And McNeil just opens right out of the gate. Uh, we'll see how that bodes for him in the rest of the match. I want to thank Ebonite for being the title sponsor. I want to thank USA Mortgage, Waterloo Convention and Visitors Bureau, the Budweiser Brands. OP Restaurant on Ridgeway, Allen's Hunting and Fishing and Guide Service, the Hampton Inn, and of course a new sponsor as well this year, Quickstar. Thank you very much for the sponsorship. I am now joined here in the booth by Tournament Director Joe Inglekiss and an unorthodox open here, something uncharacteristic of Matt McNeil to start. Yeah, it was unexpected, but it seems like every match we've been having the first guy up throw an open, leave an open frame. Crazy. Very demanding oil pattern here this week uh, that was created, almost two to one ratio. The lefties did fare a little bit better, at least the three that were uh, the top three bowlers, Cameron Crow, Nate Stubler, and Matt McNeil, but uh, very demanding all weekend. Uh, 205 entries, Joe. Congratulations on such a great event. Thanks, Mike. It was, uh, it's a lot of work, but it's a lot of fun too. And to make the cut after seven games of qualifying was a score of minus 63. That is correct. So just goes to show really, really solid field, but yet a low score to, to make the cut to the cashers round today. Everybody that cashed averaged uh, 191, I believe, was the score. Very low scoring. We're back to bowling here. Uh, obviously, we've been dealing with the, with the pandemic, but it's great to, to have this event going and happening. And uh, very safely, a lot of bowlers uh, most wearing the masks, and when they get off the lanes, they're definitely wearing a mask at all times. So we're seeing more out of Stuber that we thought we would see in the prior match uh, as he did not bowl too well in the semifinal match, but he's bringing it all at uh, Matt McNeil. You know, Nate Stuber was your leader coming into today and after the six games in the cashers round with pinfall carrying over, Matt McNeil uh, overtook him by um, 27 pins. Closest bowler to Stuber was Cameron Crow, who was uh, 183 pins behind. These two guys were the class of the field the entire weekend. Oh, my. Oh. That was an adjustment from the first frame. I am really shocked at this. Yeah, I am too. I am too. Uh, McNeil is a uh, very uh, play it safe, give, give you 220 here in the finals. He used the same ball the whole weekend, and he just he doesn't look doesn't look like that for whatever no. reason. No, typically he's a shot maker and strong shoes repeating shots and the first two on lane 19 were not very repetitive. All right, so Nate Stubler in the driver's seat here. Matt McNeil with only 37 in the third frame and Stubler can open up the opening triple. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Unflappable. That was quite the scream down there from the low end. <laughs> that sure was. Let's take a look at this shot again. Great shot. Take a look at Stubler's look. Arm out at the side. Ten back. Perfect shot. Mm -hmm. Opening triple. We do have open play that's come into the center. Obviously, bowling center struggling these days um, without being able to open for some time and now back open. you got to definitely make sure that uh, everybody can come out and enjoy the great sport of bowling. So... About uh, eight lanes away, we do have a bit of a birthday celebration or something going on. So hopefully that won't distract the bowlers too much. Hmm. 
Well, no distraction there. No, he probably yeah. put some more at ease. Yeah, yeah. Well, a little bit of ambient noise is not a bad thing. Mm -mm. It's that surprise. It is. <laughs> that gets a guy. All right, so here's McNeil. Struck on this lane the last time. That's pretty cl close. Crossing about the fourth board. Yeah, that was uh, more like his shadow balls were looking. Take a look at that one one more time, Matt McNeil style, classic style. You know, I was also talking about uh, during qualifying that, you know, Matt McNeil's an unbelievable bowler during uh, live streams. I mean, this guy went to the Open Championships, won an eagle, and then they live stream him the next year and say, we're going to promote Matt McNeil being on the live stream. He bowls Shot 800. 800. <laughs> yeah, shoots 800. <laughs> right. Uh, he won the 11thFrame.com Open, our inaugural year of doing it on a live stream. Right. He's been the high qualifier multiple times on inside bowling streams. He's also won the IB Open, and now he's our number one seed here today. Bowls really good on the stream. Oh, no. Did it again on that lane. He just doesn't feel comfortable for some reason on that lane. You know, he struck his first two shadow balls on that lane, threw them really good. His last one did just what that one did. Kind of red early, went high, and it looks like he's just not real comfortable on that lane for some reason. Yeah, this one could be over in a hurry. Yes, it could. Hmm. Very surprising. Remember, we did see the match with Clay Reese where he threw the last seven strikes yes. and made him have to show up. So, I mean, yes. it's far from over here. Yeah, it's still early enough. Still possible 227 out there for Matt McNeil. Second a hook. Yep, it did. just enough. A little bit left to target, yes, but it was. Uh, yes, got it the was. right rotation on it. Mm -hmm. uh, John in the chat, Irish Pogi, uh, makes a really good comment here. Says, now I know why Matt chose to finish on the right lane. Yes. Yes. I'm sure that was a product of that last shadow ball I threw that checked up early on him. Stuber looking for an opening six pack. That was too far out. Just a little bit to the left. Just a reminder, everybody, this is the 18th edition of the major tournaments that Joe and the Greater Iowa Bowling Association run. If you want to find out more information about all the events that they run, go over to GIBA-Bowling.com, a plethora of information there, and you can find out when the next tournament like this is coming up, and you can uh, sign up in advance and come up and participate yourself. Nice cover. It's the right way to do it. Yes, let, it is. Let the ball hit the pins. Mm -hmm. Okay, so a chink in the armor here. Yeah. He, he's not a machine. He's not, <laughs> he's not all strikes all the time. We'll see if uh, Rocky Balboa here can get back in the match. Definitely been down a couple times already. That's close. He loves the right lane. Walked yes, it out. He does. Now, what's the move on the left lane? Well, I think he just has to execute better. He, he hasn't. Uh, he pitched one out, and the other two he got going left, right a little bit too soon, so. He still doesn't know what he's going to do because he just picked up the uh, the, the, ball. The, the blue ball, which is a newer urethane ball. Um, I think it's called the fast pitch. I think could be. Um, but he's 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 got the pitch black in his hand now. So here we go. A little bit slower. Slower with more more hook. More. Yep. yep. He moved in a little bit. Yep. So it's better. Still not exactly what he was looking for, but. Uh, the result on the scoreboard yes. is exactly what he was looking for. Yes, it was. He does have the count going for him. They're, they're even on count, so 
there's room for him to still put some pressure on. Yeah, down 50. Just about going to be forced for Matt to strike out, though. Peel. Oh, just a touch late. Just a touch. Great shot, though. I wasn't sure if it was going to come off the spot or not, but it certainly did. Yep. Folks here at Cadillac XBC have been improving the center. They've got new scoreboards in. They've got some new Formica countertops, a new redone small bar over there. New internet. Yep. Tragic story, uh, Maple Lanes uh, was set on fire. The other bowling center that the family that owns this bowling center also owns, and they are rebuilding it from the ground up, and uh, they got some new plans, and you think we'll have a tournament in 2021 there? Um, that'll be interesting. They're only going to have 28 lanes now. Okay. They're putting in uh, in their bar, restaurant uh, area, they're putting in four short duck pen lanes. Okay. So 28 lanes would limit the number of entries we could have. However, preliminary discussion, we talked about what would happen if we had qualifying it here. And move it over and there. And move the yeah. Sunday over there. But then we have this guy that comes in and does our live stream. I'm not sure he wants to move all his stuff. Oh, well, that's easy. You just, go to, you just go to six game qualifiers instead of seven. Well, we may then, be forced to do that anyway. And then I would move over there. I would be yeah. able to have the time to go over and set up. Yeah, that's true. We, uh, yeah, we're going to have to have some discussion about that qualifying stuff because we did everything we could by moving up the start time, by allowing a little bit more time uh, between squads in order to hopefully get closer to running on time. And, C squad started an hour late yesterday. Still, so it, it was it was the pattern. It was how well, how hard they were. That's a lot of it. Uh, there, there's a lot of two ball frames being thrown. Yep. Uh, the other part of that comes from oh my, Mr. man, he's, on the right lane. Good lane. Uh, part of that comes too from the fact that when you put flatter patterns down, it takes longer to apply the oil. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, what, what normally would be about an hour's worth of time to dress the 36 lanes here turned in an hour and 20, 30 minutes. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. um, that's the other thing you have to keep in mind, I guess. And uh, I'm one of my pet peeves is not being on time. And I just, uh, I hate making the guys wait. Well, Joe. And this thing I hated that this that this uh, thing was not a closer match. Um, I did too. That's going to be uh, there's an out of range and a scoring error. Score. Oh, Matt just picks it up, no problem at all. Dang it. Seven spare. That was a nice pickup. We're going to go ahead. And we're going to look at yeah, this. Yeah, that's pretty cool. He picked up that non-spare, non-split spare there. Yeah. It gave him eight instead of seven <laughs> because the ten slid over so far. It was a great shot. Unfortunately, it's not going to matter. Max score 193 for McNeil. One, 192, actually. Oh, yeah, 192, yeah. That's a good shot. Oh! Wow, and then a 6-8 right there. Still got enough. Yeah, if Matt would have doubled there. Yeah, that was... Matt was pretty much forced to strike out. Eighth, ninth, and tenth. So congratulations to Nate Stubler on a victory here today. He's going to receive $3,000 for his efforts. $2,300 goes to McNeil for second. And I put it to the crowd uh, last night. Would you rather take Sean Rash and, and Matt McNeil or the field? And to those of you that uh, said I would take the field, you win. <laughs> what was the odds? One to one. One to one. Yeah. Huh? I had a lot of people in a conundrum. Yeah. That was a tough one. Well, I was. Yeah, that was a I tough was. one. I was. But Matt McNeil is an awesome bowler, and uh, he has supported these events since the very beginning. Oh, yeah. yeah. And he's a great ambassador for Storm, and he works in the industry, and he gives back to the industry, 
And even though he didn't bowl good in this match right here, it doesn't mean uh, no. really much of anything compared to what this man is. So congratulations to Matt on a great tournament again. Just uh, got snake bit here in the final after uh, three hours of sitting and, and just not a good game plan here or execution. All right, double in a tenth here. You can bowl 232. That's about his average for the event. <laughs> I will interview uh, Nate Stubler after the match. We're going to socially distance this thing, and uh, I'm going to ask him a couple of questions before we get out of here. Really impressed with his game. He led all day yesterday. McNeil got by him by about 30 pins, had to win two matches today, and showed up in the final and threw 230. So uh, congratulations to Nate Stubler on an awesome tournament. Yep, very good boy. All right, when I come back, I'll, uh, I'll interview Nate. We'll talk to him a little bit, and then uh, we'll get out of here. All right, everybody, I'm here with Nate Stubler, our champion, and we're socially distanced here so we can do this interview. Uh, congratulations, Nate, on, on this tournament. You ran away with uh, the field yesterday. You were bowling awesome yesterday, and then today Matt took you down. You two were the class of the field. What was it like to bowl against Matt? Uh, it was definitely a great experience. Uh, he's a true class act, and especially getting to bowl with him was, you know, it was a really awesome experience. I mean, watching him bowl on TV before and everything, and, you know, kind of, you know, knowing about his accolades and everything, like watching him bowl, like it was really cool to get to see that in person and everything. And, you know, he's a great guy to talk to and everything too. So it was very nice to get to pair with him throughout the, throughout the day. Yeah, you two got to bowl with each other along with uh, with Cameron Crow. You got you, you three were kind of the class of the field. Do you feel like you had an advantage at this event based off the way the oil pattern was? Um, <laughs> a slight advantage, yes, in terms of the ratio and all, absolutely yes. But, I mean, the thing was too, though, like, Definitely, I mean, we even saw it throughout the practice session and all. I mean, left side, right side, like urethane was the play throughout the whole tournament, you know, even being a, a higher mill and a longer pattern consideration. Um, you know, definitely urethane on both sides looked great, and you can see a lot of the field that bowled well today and, you know, yesterday and as well. Like, a lot of them were throwing urethane and stuff that wasn't going to was gonna control the mids and it wasn't going to completely overhook on them. What happened in the semifinal match, uh, not the game you were looking for there? <laughs> Uh, definitely in the semifinal match, uh, that was probably the tightest pair that I hit throughout the day. Um, definitely on the right lane, I knew that uh, I wanted my misses to be in because we had bowled on that pair prior. And uh, definitely keep my misses in. We're going to help me control the pocket a lot better rather than missing left. But on the left lane, though, definitely it was a very, you know, you had to catch it right. And the few times, the two, t the two times I did catch it right, I thought both shots were great. And one of them was a Greek church. And then the other one was a plaque seven. So, I mean, at that point, I was just trying to do a little bit with hand position, just get the ball to turn over a little bit sooner and later when I needed. Uh, to people that don't know you, a little bit of background on you. Tell everybody your age and kind of where you're at in your bowling career. Uh, so I'm 21 years old. I'm currently at St. Ambrose University. I plan on attending St. Ambrose uh, next year as well for my master's. So I do plan on bowling next year rather than, than this coming season if we do have a collegiate season. So hopefully I'll be back for one more year. And how long have you been bowling? Uh, since I was two years old, actually. So. Okay. I, I hear you've been dominating uh, tournaments over the summer here uh, you, whenever you've been able to get out and do a little <laughs> bit of bowling. Do uh, you think you're taking your game to the next level? Is this your biggest win of all time? Uh, it's definitely up there. It's definitely up there on, on my list of accolades and, you know, and everything. It's, it's great to be out here and, you know, it's really great to bowl with a lot of great competitors today, and um, I very much enjoyed this tournament. It was a tough field, absolutely, you know, and once again, I'm very thankful for it. So it was, it was a great time. Do you plan on uh, maybe uh, taking a professional tour uh, one, one day? Uh, definitely. Right now my main goal is to get through school and, you know, try to work on being a weekend warrior out here, but definitely just trying to get through school currently and then weigh my options after that. So, Are you bowling team trials in January? Definitely planning on bowling team trials in January. You, know, you, you got to sign up. You know that. Yes, I, <laughs> I did sign up, actually. Oh, you did? Night, okay, so, okay. You know, on, the, on the wait list, but hopefully it's still early enough. So, 
All right, buddy. Well, the last thing for you, is there anybody you have to thank? Anybody you'd like to thank? Uh, I definitely want to thank my teammates, you know, for coming out and watching and staying throughout the entire day and supporting and everything. And mom and dad back home weren't able to make it during this. But, you know, I want to give them a special thank you as well. And all my friends and family at home that have been keeping up on social media, watching live stream and everything, you know, thank you to you guys. A uh, huge shout out to uh, Brunswick and Hammer for sponsoring me and giving me the opportunity to throw their great products. You know, the purples looked great all day. Uh, the web also looked good for, for a good time being as well. So, um, yeah, and, uh, yeah. So thank you. And thank you, Mike Flanagan, as well, for doing all that you do for us. So Yeah, sure. No problem at all, man. Uh, well, it was an absolute pleasure watching you bowl. Uh, I'm going to take us off the air together, so just stay looking into the camera there. Uh, we appreciate everybody watching today and watching Nate here destroy the lanes and win uh, the tournament. Uh, thanks to everybody that participated in our chat all weekend, and um, thanks to Joe and everybody here at Cadillac uh, Lanes for sure. Uh, we'll be back with another broadcast here coming up in the near future. Uh, stay subscribed to the YouTube channel, and uh, also check out our instructional videos on Tuesdays and Thursdays every week. It'll help you bowl better, and make sure you check out Backstage Bowling as well. So for all of us here at Cadillac XPC for Nate, our champion. Uh, thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time. Yeah, thank you, guys.